everyone, welcome back to Navajo Tea Time, and this episode we are going to be talking about bullet journals. Yay! So this, 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 this topic came up because Adrian heard me and Mona talking about stationery and bullet journaling on my podcast, <laughs> which will be linked <laughs> below if you want to check it out. Um, and she thought that'd be really interesting to talk about because mm -hmm. what me and Mona talked about gave her ideas, inspiration. I was listening to their podcast episode and they were talking about why they got into bullet journaling, what some of their um, layouts look like, the things that they're most addicted to, and yeah. Also, like what 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 works and what doesn't work for them, and I was I was listening to it while I was folding laundry and I was getting inspired, and so um, I started applying some of their not their tactics, but <laughs> applying some of their like suggestions into how I was bullet journaling. So we both have bullet journals. Um, I have one here, and this is the one I use. It's um, it has my name engraved on it and my email address, just in case it gets lost. But you can see Kelsey has more to share, which is great. But um, I have this really bad habit of burning my journals. So I'll fill them out and then I'll throw them in the fire. And I'm, I'm not going to do that anymore. <laughs> right, because one of the things me and Mona were talking about, because Mona is an avid journaler and she likes to journal in a codex kind of way, you know. Mm -hmm. And... I was like, sometimes I'm journaling and I think, oh no, someone's going to read this and they're going to know my thoughts and my life. Because, you know, like when you're in history class or you're watching some documentary or something historical, like, and we found this journal and we're making a movie out of it now. And so like, but when they finally decide, you know, my life's interesting enough to make a movie about based on my journals, I'm going to be long gone. Everyone in that and my journals are going to be long gone, so yeah. it's not something to really worry about. <laughs> but, like, the thought still keeps crossing my mind. And then Adrian was telling me, oh, it might be nice, like, if my daughter or granddaughter mm -hmm. or grandchildren find my journals and read it, so she's going to stop burning them now. Yeah. <laughs> so this will probably be the first that's ever going to live for posterity, so. All right, so we wanted to kind of share a little bit about how we how we set up our journals, um, what we like and don't like, and then we also want to ask our audience, you know, what what do you include in your bullet journals if, you, if you're if you into this sort of thing? Uh, I guess we can kind of go more into what is bullet journaling. Okay. Um, it's the official bullet journal style tactic method was created by um, this person named Ryder Carroll, and he was saying, like, he has ADHD and regular planning and regular, you know, trying to do tasks and keeping his thoughts in order were always really hard. So like a traditional regular journal where you just write down all your thoughts never worked mm -hmm. and a traditional planner of like, you know, you put your tasks down and you go to schedule and those never really worked for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he kind of put them together because while he's planning out his day, he also has these random thoughts. Mm -hmm. And so he's planning out his day, he does his random thoughts. So it's basically a kind of, you make your own planning system mm -hmm. with like collections and it's supposed to be like really simplistic and like pen and paper, that's all you really need. Um, but then, you know, it exploded into like this really major crafting, sticker, stamping, calligraphy, mm -hmm. like all the artists <laughs> expression, you yeah. know, it came, became an outlet for a lot of those people mm -hmm. to like just go full out and decorate. I've seen some people do straight up masterpiece paintings mm -hmm. in their journals. Yeah, and, and so that's kind of what it's like. It's, you make your own planning system slash journaling system and you just mm -hmm. keep it together with like collections. So like me and Mona were talking about how there's this thing called habit trackers, you know, you, oh, yeah. you, you track your habits you want to develop and create, and for me and her, it turned into a like, oh, I need to exercise every day, or I need to drink water every day, you're mm -hmm. telling me to do this, and I know I need to do it, so I'm not going to. <laughs> and that kind of defeats the purpose of <laughs> making the tracker, you know, it's like, yeah. it became a chore, it became something I have to do. So I'm no longer going to do it, and that's just 
how that happens <laughs> with I, me and Mona sometimes. I know. I thought it was funny when she was saying that she started to rebel against her journal. <laughs> like, just because it was, it, was inst- it was telling her what she needed to do, and she was rebelling against it. And then another thing is she would set the bar really high, so in order to meet all of her goals, she would start setting them lower and lower. <laughs> Like, she would put stuff in there that she knew she was going to do anyway because it was already a habit, but it was funny. So, yeah, I like that. Yeah, so it's like, kind of like things like you you know you're going to do anyways. Like, like, oh, Mm -hmm. I got to wake up. I need to water my plants. Mm -hmm. But now that my journal's telling me I have to do it, that the poor things are going (laughs) to dehydrate. Yeah, that's funny. Because she has something, I think it's like, it's something defiance disorder. It, it, it's a part of the whole thing where like, you tell them to do it mm-hmm. so they're not going to do it um. and it, it's just it, that's just the way their brain works like oh go do the dishes and if they were going to do it anyways they're like nope I'm not doing it now mm. like even yeah. if it was already in their plan they already had thought of doing it and mm-hmm. then someone told them to do it so now they're like nah I'm not going to yeah <laughs> yeah and sometimes that happens with me, and it's really hard because I'm my own boss. So I'm like, oh, Kelsey, you need to do this, this, and this today for work. And I was like, no, I'm not going to do it. So I have a question. Okay. What got you into bullet journaling? What was your attraction to it initially? Mm, so I've always been a really avid planner, and I always liked planning things out and organizing my life and just getting things on paper. hmm and I really started falling in love with planners and like the feel and the paper and the texture and everything in mm-hmm. college. And I think my first like big spending planner was Moleskin. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's not as expensive. Like some of those planners get really, really expensive. Yeah. But it was like twenty five dollars for mm-hmm. a yearly planner, and I'm like, do I really want to spend twenty five dollars on a yearly planner? <laughs> it's mm-hmm. just, I'm like, yeah, it's pretty. I like it. Like, I like all the yeah. little things. It has a pocket. I see like, it has world maps and world time zones and area. Co- I've never used half of that stuff, but <laughs> <laughs> it was nice that it was there. Yeah, and I really <laughs> like the layout, mm-hmm. and because sometimes like a layout of a planner makes or breaks it you know like do you like how the hourlies are set up do you like there being Mm -hmm. an hourly do you like if it's a daily Mm -hmm. or if it's a weekly or something like that you know yeah and so it I started bullet journaling after I had my baby because then I was trying to get back into doing happy accidents work yeah and I noticed I developed but they call it mom brain. Oh, yeah. Where mm-hmm. you don't remember things as much as you used to. You're kind of foggy and everything. Yeah. And that was kind of frustrating for me. You know, like, I used to be able to recall <laughs> things just, like, you know, on the spot. I can uh-huh. recall them and the dates and the plans and everything. Mm-hmm. But it was more difficult for me after I had my baby. And so I was like, well, I don't want to go shopping for a planner. Or I tried to go shopping for planners, and I couldn't yeah. find anything I liked. And then I was just looking online, and then people were like, oh, bullet journaling. I'm like, what's bullet journaling? And I saw, like, people doing these really fancy layouts. And I was like, oh, yeah. this would be fun to try out. I think the first, there's two people. Um, one's called The Plant-Based Bride, and the other's Rachel Lee. Mm-hmm. Rachel Lee. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there should be another one. There's, I feel like there should be another, like, a middle name, but I think yeah. there's not. But, um, so I really like their journaling and, like, I just started, like, searching and YouTubing, like, a bunch of different bullet journals to find different ideas for different spreads mm-hmm. and layouts, and then I yeah. just started piecing mine together. I went to, like, Michael's and bought the $5 bullet journal. That's what this one is. This one's my first bullet journal. Um, after, I got a sticker machine shortly after it, so I started making my own stickers. Um, and then, you know, you put stickers on them. It's fun. And then, so... Ooh, I like that. (laughs) Usually they come with, like, a table of contents. And so you can create your own and, like, with the yearly, the yearly stuff. The future log is what they're called. And what I like doing for mine to just kind of, like, incorporate Navajo words is I found, or I created, the months with the Navajo names on them. That's really cool. And so that's just like to personalize it and then my goals. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's like different things I tried to do, like 
there's one thing that's called like a year in pixels and you just kind of like some people use it as like a mood tracker or something and it's like oh i was happy this day i was whatever like what's a good day and what's red oh red's a productive day because she's very productive <laughs> like that's a lot of red days I like i like the color red so if it's a happy day then it's going to be red so i like it but um as you can see in March, I kind of stopped doing the year in pixels because it just gets really difficult to do every day some of the things. I got really creative sometimes, like with my stickering and like colors, but um, after a while you kind of get burnt out on it. Mm -hmm. And you don't always finish the journal. Some people go and like finish the journal all the way. Uh -huh. Other, I just stop at the end of the year. Oh, I see. And at one point, I like got really sticker crazy, so I just like used stickers instead of <laughs> drawing boxes. Uh -huh. <laughs> but yeah, so like I was this this one has like a bunch of different layouts and a bunch of different experimenting mm -hmm. on the things I liked, and I pulled this one out because this one was really important for me because this was the one I used during the pandemic, mm -hmm. and it's not a bullet journal. It's a goal setting journal because oh. I had a bullet journal, but it was only like six months long. Mm -hmm. And so this one starts in July, but I needed this goal setting journal because it was really hard for me to like sit down and make a layout every week and every month because during the pandemic, you were just closed off and shut down from everyone. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of needed something to help me just go from day to day. And this one was a lot easier and it has like this is like what a daily looks like and so it has what you're doing for the day and your tasks mm -hmm. all set up and everything and that was a lot easier for me to deal with you know with all like the mental stress of mm -hmm. being in a pandemic yeah and so this one really helped me keep going and doing like the simple tasks I needed to do every day mm -hmm. like you can see Navajo tea time edits <laughs> <laughs> Um, because your brain gets yeah. burnt out with like all the stress that was going on that year. Yeah. And so that was really helpful for me. So this isn't a bullet journal, but it's a goal setting journal. I should have brought my planners. So I use planners very heavily. Um, I use start planners. Those are the absolute best for me because they include, they're perfect for all the different things that I'm working on at once. And so I can track my days and weeks ahead of time and it includes all these different goals that are already a part of the layout. So I love Star Planners. They're really good. They're kind of pricey, but to me they're worth it because mm -hmm. they have, you know, everything I need is already built into it. I really love the design. And, um, like, there's even sections for, like, budgeting. Mm -hmm. There's, like, a budget section. There's a section for planning out your holidays. So you can like plan your end of year, you know, like Thanksgiving, Christmas, that sort of thing. All of the gifts you need to buy. There's a section for um, like birthdays every month. So you know like what's coming up, whether it's an event, like a party, or you have to buy a gift for this person, you know what I mean? And so you can track all of that. And then there's a section for travel. Yeah. But it's just like, you know, I think it's like a tour, it's like a four pager or something, you know, but you can track your flight, um, your luggage, all the like all the logistics you need <laughs> I really like those but I didn't bring that with me <laughs> I have a stack of them at home I don't throw those away and then I have like I currently switched over this year to the um it, it was a collaboration between inspired by Dinette Bazaad and Grown Up Navajo because I really love the poetry of Jacqueline Russell and what she did is she collaborated with um inspired by Dinette Bazaad so they have a planner and it's like there's Danelle language kind of incorporated into it as far as like um, the, the months, but also there's a section like asking you, how are you doing, you know, in Navajo, which I thought was cool. But at the beginning of every month, there's also a poem. And those poems have been speaking to me. So <laughs> I'm loving it. But the layout isn't as extensive as what I have with the start planner. Mm -hmm. So that, that's kind of like where this guy came in. But I'll let you go through your other, your others, and then I'll, yeah. I'll share mine. And so this one's my current bullet journal. And I found these notebooks on. So there's this website online. Um, 
And they have a lot of like scientific notebooks and journals. And I really, last year I had the jellyfish. This one's the anatomical heart one. And they have like geology, they have what an actual nerve looks like. Wow. And every, so it's really sciencey mm -hmm. and it's really cool because I'm a nerd she and I is. like science stuff. <laughs> oh, I like it too. Yeah, so this is my current one. Um, and I found a layout I really like. Like, I, so they're called like dashboard weeklies and it's just like my week, the tasks, a review, and then just notes that I need for the day. And I've been printing my own stickers and I have washi tape and stuff. So I've been doing that more. And it's not a dot grid journal. It's, um, it has, that's a blank one. So it has the, the grid, the grid, what are they called? Like the grid paper? Like for math? Yeah, they have grid paper and then the line paper on one yeah. side. That's cool. So I think this really helped me narrow down the, the type of weekly layout I like. I like that. That is super smart. I've never seen anything like that where it has the grid paper and the Yeah, like so the they paper. have really cool notebooks and they just mm -hmm. came out with a washi tape um, really? collection that has like the hearts, the bones, and so wow. we went, um, I convinced my husband to buy them for me. <laughs> <laughs> so for this journal, I'm sticking with like a theme and mm -hmm. so it's kind of like bones and flowers and butterflies. <laughs> it's, it's not a very Navajo friendly design, but it looks cool though. It's just something like for me, it just kind of like finding beauty or like regrowth and things that mm -hmm. have passed on and that yeah. I just find it aesthetically pleasing. Mm -hmm. um, so those are my journals, my bullet journals, and they help me out day to day. Um, some days I don't even touch my monthly, but getting it set up at the beginning of the month is always helpful mm -hmm. to like center myself at the beginning of every month mm -hmm. and then just looking back at it through the week so I'm just like ah I didn't write anything in but you know I did a lot of stuff or yeah. like oh I had a lot of time today because I just put a bunch of stuff in the journal mm -hmm. but you know it, it's helpful yeah and if it helps me then it's doing its job that's true that's what they're there to do I mean they're really great tools I remember when I first started bullet journaling the, I would um, I would draw the calendar and I would you know make these beautiful drawings for every month mm -hmm. and it was really time consuming but it was also really therapeutic for me because I love to draw and so it would like when I draw it's the only time that I like my mind calms down and I can just like you know be immersed in, in you know this creative process and so I would do that and then the problem I started having was I couldn't find the right layout that gave me enough space for, you know, the whole year. That's why I just kind of reverted back to regular planners. I found the Star Planner. I'm addicted to those. I'm going to go back. Um, I really like the planner I'm using now just because of the poetry in it. But, um, like I said, it's not the, the right format for me, so I think I'm going to go back. Anyways, so this journal here... Um, I think it's a lectern. Is that what they're called? Oh, you got the bullet, the official bullet journal bullet journal. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> I wouldn't do it any other way. <laughs> so this is the, the real deal. This is about $25, and for a little more, you can get it engraved. And I'm just, like, totally extra like that. <laughs> and you can choose the color you want it engraved in, and I chose gold because like I said, I'm extra. But this is cool because like with every purchase, you get like, um, there's it te there's a whole system that they, they created. And so it's all in here. And then there's um, all these different like instructions and there's a QR code here too. And you can go here and like get more. You can really fall into the rabbit hole with this thing. <laughs> and I did, but <laughs> it's not like, I don't see like, I don't have any stickers or anything yet because I'm just, I started out really basic, um, like the first page is like just my name and my social media, and then the way I have it set up is my index is I have my intentions, um, my favorite things, my mental rule book, um, what I call roses and thorns, 
my future log, hikes, travel, long-term goals, short-term goals, projects and volunteer work, and then I have brain dumps throughout. And that was something that I pulled from the podcast was Kelsey was saying that she has sections within her journal where she just does a brain dump. And I was like, you know what, I need to incorporate that into here because, you know, sometimes you just, like, I don't like writing in a journal, like, Mm -hmm. you know, like, today is, like, dear diary, you know what I mean? (laughs) Like, I I can't do that anymore. I stopped doing that, like, in high school. So my bullet journal's intention is not so much to track my day-to-day, it's more like to track all the other cool things that I do besides work because, I mean... The problem with me is like the work I do, it's just so immense sometimes. And it's like the main, it's always at the forefront of everything. And sometimes I forget to write down and track the things that, like all the other cool things that I'm doing that are, you know, not related to work. They're not related to, you know, pulling in funds. You know what I mean? It's like, so like, for example, um, like in my intentions, I have a few sections here like marriage, parenthood, spirituality, work, self-care. And I think this is important because sometimes you just need to be clear as to like where you're going. So like for example with marriage it says be patient and kind. Take care with words. Prioritize romance. Be faithful in body, mind, and spirit. And then it you know there's those little like there's a bullet point for, like, underneath every single one of these sections. Like, for spirituality, you know, guard the spirit. Don't let others discourage. Pray often and fervently. Give offerings and gratitude. You know, and so it's like, this for me is, like, something I can circle back to. And these are good because, like, in times of, like, when you're really going through it, when you're stressed out, you're overwhelmed, or things aren't really going the way you want them to sometimes I think people or at least me I tend to de- like deviate you know what I mean I, I don't like staying on the straight and arrow has been a practice that I've had to really work on since I was like in high school you know what I mean like being an adult is hard and staying on the straight and arrow arrow not narrow is hard and like just being a good person takes a lot of discipline and when you're someone who's just naturally like rebellious when you're naturally wanting to like go to the extreme um, sometimes you need something to kind of keep you grounded and focused and that's what this is Um, the next thing are like my favorite things because sometimes when I don't know like for me I used to have these ups and downs and the, the downs were like canyons and so sometimes just having that down I think is nice but also because then sometimes you're like, I don't know, I would get so deep in the, like, in the crevices of depression sometimes that I'm like, what do I like? You know, what are my favorite things? Because sometimes you forget. So I have that here. But also it's here because if anyone were to find this journal, like my kids, for example, um, like my daughters, I think it would be good for them to read this to kind of see, you know, who is she as a person? as opposed to like who is she as my mother you know what i mean because i think the performance we put on for our kids they see a side of us but they don't see us as a whole person and i didn't really start seeing my mother as a person until i was an adult and so yeah and then i have my mental rule book so these are like the do's and don'ts and it's just basically like do this don't do that you know what i mean like do have integrity in everything you do don't let the bad guys win. <laughs> be you know? annoying, but yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, th- there's su- well, some of these are very specific. Like, don't be a hoe bag. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be reminded of that. Um. <laughs> I mean, this is like, like I said, this is for not just for me. This is also these are okay. So the mental rule book. These are the rules that I've lived by my whole life, and I wanted to write them down for posterity. You know what I mean? That's that's why they're here. It's not because I have to be reminded all the time. It's just like, you know, if you want to know what, what guides me and what has guided me for the majority of my life, this is it. You know what I mean? And this is what I always tell people. This is what I preach. And I, this is what I, like, build into my identity and who I am. So, like, I like this one. Don't forget you are good medicine in human form. <laughs> okay, so I have my wins and my drama here things that make me sad but are good to vent and then my future log this one's like it's super basic but it's basically 
teeth cleaning and exams, uh, dentistry, eye exams, like wellness checkups, dog vaccines, child care, you know what I mean? Just really basic stuff that I know I need to take care of throughout the year. And the dot is basically like, this needs to get done. And the X is like, this has been taken care of. So that's how I kind of keep track of all of that. And then there's like finances stuff. So I have like Navajo Nation ARPA funds, <laughs> tax return. And then this is the last page of my future log, which is kind of like, it's kind of chaotic, but it's basically the rest of the year, May, June, July, August, we, like stuff that has to happen. So I have like our Navajo Tea Time film days in here, um, events that are coming up that I need to be aware of. You know, uh, stuff you need to plan for the future. Yeah, and it's all just thrown into this <laughs> one. <laughs> it's one page of like, fuck it. And then this one's my favorite. So this is the beginning of the stuff I like. So I have hikes, hikes that I've done. And the things I track are like the date, the length, the duration, the route type, the category, the elevation. And yeah, so it's fun. And I have a, a, like kind of a few pages for this. And then there's a brain dump section there. And then I have my travel section. And this is like, I, um, I tend to do a lot of traveling and this is how my life was before. Uh, the pandemic and it's kind of returning so starting in March as some of you saw in my vlog I went to Durango, Albuquerque, Santa Fe, Sedona and Berkeley all in the month and so this helped me track like you know the dates, lodging, cost, activities um, when I went to California like flight information and then there's stuff in here for future trips that we're planning so that kind of keeps you know everything together so when I as we're planning I'm kind of filling this out and so this is kind of a long section too because I know that that's gonna keep happening and then I have my long-term goals and this is related to like buying land getting a house um, like graduate school paying off debt like student loans and then my short-term goals related to my job and different um, organizations that I work for, Navajo Tea Time. And then I got a bunch of stickers. <laughs> That's what I wanted to share. <laughs> so I, I was like looking, after listening to you and Mona talk, I was like, hey, I should get some washi tape and I should get some stickers. And so I got these, I, I found these and I'm like, oh, these are cute because they're just black and white. And then I found this and it's super dorky. But it's, um, it's like Mickey Mouse, <laughs> it's like Mickey and Minnie, and I don't know, when I was a kid, I used to freaking love, like, Mickey and Minnie, and I was like, this is so dorky, and I'm like, I really want it, though, and my husband's like, this is for you, no one's gonna see this, <laughs> like, who cares, like, get it for yourself, and I'm like, but it's all, it's silly, and he was like, who cares? Just do it. That's the point, right? So it's like, it's not cool like Kelsey's at all. But <laughs> but I do have like, like for example, so I'll, I'll show you a few of them. So like, see? It's, yeah, it's <laughs> fine. I mean. And then like, there's this one. And then here's my Navajo Tea Time one, like mini. And it's just so cute. Like, I don't know. I freaking love Mickey and Minnie. I'm kind of a dwarf like that. And, like, most people wouldn't know this about me, so I'm really being transparent here. So I have to fill out some of these pages. They're not filled out yet because I just started putting stickers everywhere. So, so yeah. I just started using the washi tape and the stickers, and I figured, you know what? This is for me, and no one's going to see this. No one cares. And then, um what I'm going to start adding. So I, I have, you know, a lot of journal left and this I'm going to use to track some activities that I'll be engaging in, um, next year. But what I wanted, not next year, but in the fall, but what I wanted to share is like, so in this journal, there's a little folder here and I keep a few things in there. Like there's, <laughs> There's this fortune, it says, education will never be as expensive as ignorance. So I'm like, I'm keeping that. And then I have this really cute sticker designed by Landis Bahi. It says, Hojon, it's gorgeous. And this one too, it's a, it's a Yeti. 
And then I have this signed sticker from um, Stephen Paul Judd from Resilience. And it's, I love it, because it, it's, it's a Life magazine, but it says Standing Rock 2016. And I was there, and I'm really proud of it. And at Resilience, he signed the sticker for me. I was like, cool. And then I have a picture of a postcard of Big Sur, which this picture gives me so much peace. I can like hear the ocean when I look at this picture. And then um, when I ordered my planner from Inspired by Dinepizod, they sent this to me and it says, you're worthy of all the blessings coming your way. And I'm like, yes, I yeah. am. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, <laughs> and then the bullet journal comes with a bunch of stickers too. So yeah, so I keep all this stuff here inside and eventually I'll put it down. But I think like what I was doing is I was just trying to like plan out um, stuff. Anyways, I wrote about my NAU journey and I can send, I can like feel Kelsey looking at this, but <laughs> I have my picture, <laughs> my graduation picture, but it's like, I'm so proud of this. It's okay, be proud of the things you're proud of. I'm so proud of graduating. I'm the first <laughs> of my parents' children to get a bachelor's degree and I'm just like I'm not anyways. judging you okay <laughs> judge. just kidding and then this is what I use um, I got this from Amazon but it's like keeps all of my pens and washi tape and highlighters and I have this do you have one of these no um, but my husband just ordered one because yeah. I got him into bullet journaling too really yeah cool. yeah Michael got this for me he was like, I know you like to bullet journal, and he bought this for me. I was like, oh, thanks. So, so he bought himself one. It's coming in the mail so. soon. Yeah, so I was going to talk about, like, yeah, she had, she, she had her future planning and everything. Mm -hmm. And what I've learned through the years is I can't do future planning all at once. Mm. So what I'm trying to do is, like, chop everything up into, like, quarters. Mm -hmm. So I have, like, my first future plan, which is, like, the first three months because that's what a quarter is, so like, you know, I have like the first three months, and that's easier for me to plan out and get things done, and then I have like and the next quarter with the next three months. I really love the way her journals look. <laughs> like, I'm all looking at them. I've had years cool. to practice, and like mm -hmm. I said in my stationary um, podcast, <laughs> if you want to check that out. Yeah, I want to get some of those stickers from you. Do you have any on hand? No, I make them. Okay, so uh, she's gonna make me a custom order. <laughs> make you custom order stickers. <laughs> but like, I've always been like super into like scrapbooking and mm -hmm. buying, I, I've loved stickers so much. I used to just buy them and hoard them because mm -hmm. what am I gonna stick? Yeah. Why would I stick it on a piece of paper and then the paper goes <laughs> away? But <laughs> I know, that's why I have all my stickers aren't even used. They're just like in here. And after a while, I was like, you know, you just gotta use the stickers. I had a bunch of stickers and I wasn't using them. And I finally put them on a bottle. Yes, th th that's why I bought a Hydro Flask bottle. Yeah. That's why I bought the bottle, was so I could put stickers on them. <laughs> and it's sad because, like, this, okay, this bottle is actually my friend Jessica's. And I had it, I didn't get a chance to give it back to her, so, like, throughout the pandemic, because I haven't seen her since, like, 2019 or something. And I was going on a hike, and I was like, man, like, I needed a bottle. I didn't want to buy another one, so I, I just, I vowed I'm going to buy her a new bottle. And I'm just going to use this one. And so I put all my stickers on there. So Jessica, if you're watching this, you're going to get a brand new bottle very soon. I'm just going to mail it to you. But yeah, so like I've always... One thing I've never liked about the planner mm -hmm. world is... It's gonna be like some of you guys are gonna roll your eyes, but like, oh my gosh, Kelsey, you're being so dark and pessimistic. Like I hate how positive all the stickers are. Mm -hmm. You know, they're like, it's oh, like toxic. Go, yeah. girly, like you got it. Make the day. Blah blah blah. And I'm like, oh my god. You know what? The, the one sticker that I'm really loving right now was I, I made a whole sheet for Mona because she asked me to or showed it to her, but. It, there's a line from a song and I don't know if I, I can't really show it to people but I really like I'm gonna show I'm gonna show Adrian the sticker and <laughs> <laughs> and with a lot of the stuff I've been dealing with with um, you know the community and stuff like I'm, I'm, I'm meeting their demands but they just won't <laughs> 
We want to know that tea. Go to the hot tea video. I know, right? It's it's, April. So this sticker collection is a part of this. Um, this it's called it's called the Happy Planner, mm-hmm. and it is very positive. And the one like the stickers I haven't used that are still in here say like "Just be kind," or <laughs> which is horrible, or like "Love today," or um, I see a lot of these say "Love today." I mean, they're really cute. But I'm just like, I'm not putting that in my bullet journal. You know what I mean? <laughs> what because if I don't love today? What if I don't love today? And then I'm going to feel, like, pressured by my stickers. <laughs> right? That's, like, I don't want to be pressured by a sticker. Excuse me. I know. And, and the funny thing is, like, you're in charge of all of this. Mm-hmm. Like, you're making conscious choices. And so I, I intentionally left out. Like, even this one says good times. And I'm just like, what if I'm not having good times? I'm just kidding. They're like forcing you to be happy and forcing you to enjoy the plans you're making. It's like, but what if I don't want to make these plans? What if I have to make them and they're like annoying? Yeah, and on top of that too, like <laughs> the the space within the journal that I'm actually using these stickers, like, because I'm not using um, these Mickey Mouse stickers throughout the whole journal. It's just for this one section, and these are um, these are work related. Not work related, but volunteer stuff. So like. Um, for example, like I, like the resilience organization, they have their own like mini section here and then the Dine studies conference here, the Dine Hatafli association here. And so this is kind of like, this is real work, you know, that it's like volunteer work, like the Studis reading group that's here, um, Navajo tea time, uh, the Indian collective. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't get it, but we that's okay. <laughs> and so, like, on the sticker, it just says, like, this is outcome declined, April 26, 2020. <laughs> and it's sad because, like, here it says follow your dreams. So we did that. We, we submitted a proposal, and it was great, but it wasn't accepted. Um, that's okay. Like, I, yeah. I, feel, I felt like we were kind of like, mm-hmm. is it art? Is it not art? I'm like... For me, yeah. anything's art. Yeah. But... Well, we had a great idea, and we're still going to pursue it, so we'll share more information on that as we um, move forward. But like I said, you know, these are these are sections that are kind of, like, they're not super work-related, but they kind of are. Like, this is an MIT Solve page. So you don't want to, like, set yourself up to feel bad about, you know, maybe not getting the grant that you submitted for or not following through with a project or maybe the event you were planning wasn't, you know, I don't know, maybe something crazy happened. You don't know. So I think I'm going to start doing this. This is another recommendation that Kelsey mentioned in the podcast and it was like the use of stamps. And when I was a little girl, I was obsessed with wooden stamps and I used to have a stamp collection. And then as I got older, I was like, oh, I'm too old for this. Because they were all like teddy bears and, you know, it's like really cutesy. And um, I went to I went to the store and I found this rose. And I was like, I want to start buying more stamps and like build out my collection again. And so, and I got this like blood red ink. So it's like super fun. And this is like going to be my thing now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I, I remember... Like I said, in you know, Lisa Frank was kind of like my first introduction oh my into I like stationery and stickers mm-hmm. and paper and mm-hmm. stamps and pens and everything. Yeah. And so like stamping and everything, and then like my aunt getting me into scrapbooking just kind of mm-hmm. went from like being really girly, like she was saying, and like mm-hmm. really kitty and childish to like, oh no, there's also adult. <laughs> Stationary. Oh my god, I am obsessed with scrapbooking. I had a friend in um in Flagstaff. So after I had my kids, I was going to school at NAU, and I met this this um, person out there, and she was a major scrapbooker. Like she would have scrapbooking parties. She had one of those um, really cute. What are they called? Like, is it a Cricut cutter or something? Mm-hmm. Yeah, she had one of those, and she was like the master. And she would have these scrapbooking parties, and so. I went to one and I started buying scrapbooks and I was making them for my kids. And so I made these amazing scrapbooks and I still have to make one for Bahi, but for the other two they have theirs. And I got like super obsessed with it and I wish I had the time to do that now because I still haven't had time to do that with Bahi. Like I haven't, I haven't, 
Yeah, so I really want to get back into it because I love scrapbooking. It's so fun. I mean, like, I could, like, scrapbook from sunup to sundown just yeah. sitting there. Yeah. Like, that's what I do with, like, when I do my <laughs> monthly setups mm -hmm. uh, um, and then, like, my quarterly setups. My Gernon, today, I'm doing my journal. He's like, <laughs> okay. So I get, like, a big thing of water, a thing of snacks, <laughs> and I... So... <laughs> I love that. Adrian has her little pouch. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll be right back. Yeah. While we wait, we'll go through some of the little itty bitty stuff I have in here. Super important. Post its. What else? Mm, I don't know why I have hand sanitizer in here. I have. Yeah, just a bunch of little things. What's in your bullet journal packet or your scrapbooking? Oh my god! <gasps> this isn't everything. This, <laughs> this isn't everything. Show me what it is. Let me show them. Let me show you what she brought out. Okay. <laughs> it's clear the table. <laughs> this is mainly stamps and washi tape. Oh my god! <laughs> Look at this. She's got these tubs of washi tape. I got washi tape. I have stamps. I have the acrylic thing where you put more stamps on. Oh my god, I need one of these. I got this from Goodwill, so somebody like made these stamps, okay? You want to talk about bullet journaling and stamps and scrapbooking? Oh my god. I got fancy letters. This is so freaking cool. I got all of these. <laughs> wow. Ooh, these are cool. It's like Halloween. I'm not, that, that, that's washi like tape. the majority of what I have is Halloween washi tape. I bought that with Mona. Me and Mona went to like a secondhand store. Wow. And so these are stamps. She's like, give me my stamps. <laughs> give them back. <laughs> I know, I've got like one stamp. I'm like, I'm so proud of it. She's got like a pork. I'm like, that's cute. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and these are my stickers. Wow. Oh, this is tape. Or paint? Paint. It's so like... Are these stickers? These, Dang. And I had to stop buying these. these are like big old booklets. Because these are like $19.99 each. Oh, God. So. Yeah, like mine, I was hiding the price. But just this little booklet here, I think it was like $8.99. Yeah. Just for this little thing. These are, these are $20 each, and I buy them. After New Year's. It's like a hundred bucks right here. After New Year's, they're like 50% off, 40% off. You know, that's when I buy them is on this, when they're on sale. So like, yeah, this is kind of what I wanted to talk about a little bit is like the goal setting stickers and how Ooh. like toxic and big babe. <laughs> Watch out here. Yeah. Let's so get like these it. stickers, they get like, it's like hustle harder today. It's like, but I've been hustling all week. Why do it's I have to hard? Do. Right? <laughs> like some of these, like, why am I arguing with these stickers? <laughs> but it's like the key to success is to start before you're ready. I'm like, no, these are just, I don't like any of these quotes. And so I just started like, I like these ones. These are shiny nice. and pretty, but yeah. like, you should show them. Oh, okay. They they're so them. pretty. <laughs> they are. So like these, they're kind of like holographic and like foil and shiny and pretty. And if you've seen, if you go to my Instagram, you'll see all my bullet journaling um, posts for the year. But some of them are like, today or never. It's like, well, I guess never, because it's just like the defiance in me is like, do this today or don't ever do it. It's like, well, I guess I'm never doing it then. And I like that one. It says slow down. Oh, I, think, I don't even see that. It's just like, you're all like, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like some of these stickers like I like I end up arguing with them so I don't use them but I haven't bought a new sticker book this year. I really wanted to go shopping this weekend for myself. Uh -huh. I planned a whole day around it because I mean this is Mother's Day weekend and I was like I'm gonna take myself out. I'm gonna buy a bunch of stickers. I'm gonna get some more stamps. I wanna get it. I wanted to get some um, highlighters, mm -hmm. but not the bright ones. The the muted ones, the pastel highlighters. Uh -huh. Maybe some more gel pens and. Oh, remember when gel pens were so big in like yeah. the early 2000s? Mm -hmm. <laughs> My sister was obsessed, and I'm just like, what's the big deal? And now I'm all like, I need some. <laughs> <laughs> so that, those are just my stamps and stickers. Wow. I didn't show my pens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Your box of pens. <laughs> <laughs> and then for my little one, we got like a really big um, 
filing cabinet. You know, oh, like yeah. the, the, the drawers are like this big and it's like that wide. Because mm -hmm. we keep getting so much stuff from mm -hmm. Head Start. I'm like, we need to put this somewhere. So we bought, so there's four drawers. The top drawer is my scrapbooking paper. Wow. <laughs> you look so happy. It's one of my dreams to have a room that's just my scrapbooking paper. Yeah. You know? I love that. Like, <laughs> like, I love that for you, Kelsey. <laughs> it's like one of my dreams are coming true. I have like a drawer full of paper and it's just pretty paper. I have one of those at home too, actually. So like in my living room, I have, um, well, it's not even a living room, but there's a space and we keep all of our rec like our record player and our records on there. Mm -hmm. But if you lift up the cover, it's actually an old dresser. And in there I have all of like my paper and my planners and things like that. So I love it. And I'm always like, don't open those drawers. <laughs> I cover them and I hide them from the kids. I like, mean, like, this is not for you. Even when I was little, like back in middle school, <laughs> me and my cousin, we used to just like, talk about like you know like, oh this is our dream house and blah 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 I'm like and I'm gonna have a room full of fancy paper and I'm gonna open a drawer I'm gonna like look at this it's embroidered <laughs> and then I'm gonna put it back and close it and <laughs> I love it I know my dream is to have a to have a library to have a home that has a library mm -hmm. and then in there that's where all of my my you know my pens and my my books and all those, yeah, all my crafts, my scrapbooks, like all of that will have its own its own little place. And I'm not thinking like a huge library like Beauty and the Beast, but like, you know, just a room with a bunch of books and a big, beautiful, ornate desk mm. and a big, comfortable, like, throne. <laughs> not even a chair, but a throne, <laughs> like a clawfoot throne. And I'm going to sit there and I'm going to write letters. Because I used to write letters. I was really big. Like, as a little kid, I was really into, like, Lisa Frank, too. And I wrote all my friends' letters. And then I got older and I started transitioning to different kinds of paper. And I would, I was, I always had pen pals. I would write letters to everybody. I would even write letters to my parents, like, if I was upset with them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God, my mom found one a couple... A couple months ago, and, and she was, like, reading it, and I'm like, what are you looking at? She's like, you wrote this letter to me when you were, like, 16. Oh, no. And I read it, and I was so embarrassed, I took it away from her. I was like, you can't have that anymore. I'm like, that is so embarrassing. She's like, no, I want to keep it. And I'm all, like, expressing my, dis <laughs> my disdain. <laughs> so, you guys should share with us. Maybe, I think it'd be kind of cool if people posted. Can they post pictures under... In the comments? I don't think so, huh? No, Maybe on our, our, our Facebook page. Facebook and Instagram, you know, if you want to, yeah. like, post or tag us in your bullet journal, yeah. and then we can talk that about bullet helpful. journaling. Yeah. If you can't tell, I'm really into it. When people are more comfortable coming together, Maybe we could do like a like a bullet journaling party with like charcuterie <laughs> boards and tea. And we can Only all if you're bring prepared to stay there all day, because that's It'll what I do. <laughs> People will come and go, and I'm like still there. Like <laughs> that would be so fun, like at a library or something. That'd be fun. You know what I mean? Yeah, that I, I would can. Be fun. We can use up all my stickers. They need to get used. <laughs> I, most of those stickers are at the part of like, like oh, I don't like this. Quote like, anymore. Like, Do we you, can bring all of the stuff that we don't use, and that could be for everyone. We could share. It's yeah. Like, Here, and you, then I don't like can... this anymore. Do you want it? No. <laughs> <laughs> some people like things some like people, that. Yeah, some people, like, the, the stuff you don't like, someone else might really enjoy, though. They might find motivation from it, as opposed to, like, this is a bunch of BS. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't want to argue with, like, you know, Adrian's like, oh, that's a nice one, you know, slow down. I'm like, no. <laughs> I know, and, like, mine are like, best day ever, or be kind, and I'm just like, <laughs> no. <laughs> not in my bullet journal. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But someone else might love that, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, so. I know what you mean, I get it. Yeah. But obviously, people like it, they're being sold. Yeah. And that's kind of one of the reasons why I started, like, I bought the Cricut and got my... Oh, you have one? Yeah, I have a Cricut maker. That's what I make the stickers on. Oh. Um, cool, lucky. lucky. <laughs> it was four hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, dang. And me and my mom went halvesies on it because we bought the one where you can cut fabric, 
and oh. she was really getting into quilting. Mm -hmm. But we figured, it, like, we found out it wasn't really great for quilting mm. because, you know, like, with quilting, you try to save as much fabric as you can. Yeah. With the Cricut, you like you have to put them in twenty by twenties, and then it only cuts so much on the grid. Oh, so it's a and lot it, of waste. It was so wasteful with the fabric. I'm like, I had to, oh. that doesn't work. But hey, it works for my stickers. <laughs> <laughs> and we used it for a couple of her. Um, school stuff too. I was gonna say like, you know, some days or some months, like this is one of my brain dumps, you know? It's completely empty. Mm. And that happens sometimes. Yeah. So I don't feel like everything- Like you have to be okay with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And sometimes they're just blank and- My thing work. used to be, like my main challenge used to be like having my, um, like if I was writing and there was a typo, I would have this urge to just cut the whole page out and start over. And that's what I've been fighting is like this need for perfection, for everything to be like spelt perfectly, uh, written out nice and clear. And I'm getting to the point now where I'm just like, you know what? It doesn't have to be perfect. You know, just just enjoy it. You know, get it mm -hmm. down. Just enjoy it. This is supposed to be fun. And so I think what, what's fun for me is finding a layout that I really enjoy, that works for me. And um, it's easy to replicate. So, like, the ones I really, really like are the hiking format that I, I'm using now. Like, the travel one, like, the travel one's really nice. I like, I like how I laid everything out. And then the hikes, too, I really like the layout. And so, that's going to work for me. And then there's other ones that are more chaotic. And that was just kind of an experiment. But... Yeah, so yeah. Fi finding what works for you is a part of the journey, and then... Yeah, because like, I've been doing mine for years, like, and if mm -hmm. this one, like I said, I, I found the weekly layout that it works for me, mm -hmm. and some days I just don't feel like doing any of it. Yeah, and I would probably fine. go crazy if I had a weekly layout. It would be so hard. Well, like, so my husband, he does the whole month at once. Oh, really? So he does all, because he knows he's just going to have the same mm -hmm. weekly layout all month. I know I'm going to have the same weekly layout all month, but for mm -hmm. me, part of planning out my week is setting it up, because mm. then that kind of helps me set the mood for the week, mm -hmm. basically. Do you do an index? No. Because um, I don't do collections in here to where I go back. Oh, yeah. It's just like move forward. Like, <laughs> don't constantly. look back. <laughs> I know, don't look back. Well, because that's what I have, like... Um, my, my planning, let's see, where did I go? I had this. So right here, um, I've been kind of working through different like Navajo terms and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So like at the beginning of one of the months, I have like my planning. So I plan everything out mm -hmm. and then like brain dump. Mm -hmm. So I know where they are at the beginning of the month. Yeah. And I don't need. It says Natsaha Kiss. I like that one. Yeah. I've been working with Mona on terms. <laughs> you should find out how to say brain dump. I think Navajo. they're they're kind of the same thing, mm -hmm. I think. Well, for me, this is what brain dump is. Well, like, yeah. You just, like, get your thoughts out yeah. onto the paper mm -hmm. and everything. Yeah. My brain dumps are so dumb. They're not dumb. <laughs> they're what you <laughs> need them to be, okay? And the funny thing, too, is when I do them, like, I just do them one sentence at a time. I don't, That's like... Fine you know, write whole pages or paragraphs. And like, like Adrian was saying, like, with like messing up, like I was trying to make a square and then like my highlighter just goes, Neh. Oh yeah. But uh -huh. you know, it's like, whatever. It's only a highlighter. <laughs> well, I'm a Virgo, so I have a, I'm like, I, I crave perfection in, and I like, I don't, I don't like to stray into chaos. You know what I mean? Not, not in my, not in my journal. <laughs> Like, I think my brain dumps are basic because, like, like the first sentence of the hiking brain dump is, hiking with friends is the best, exclamation point. And then the first sentence after the travel section is, traveling with Shababe is the best, exclamation <laughs> point. And then the first sentence after all of the different projects that I have listed on here, it says, I do a lot and sometimes I don't know why. That's the truth. <laughs> but I just, I don't know. I, I I don't tell, I don't usually, I'm not the kind of person that writes all, like, you know, some people, they put everything on social media or they, they vent to their friends all the time and I don't really have that luxury. So this has kind of been my space where I'm just really honest and I write all this stuff down and like, I really like my thorns page. Like for example, like read that, but don't, not out loud. <laughs> put that in 
anywhere. But it's here, and it's beautiful. Or this, look. Could I ever say that? I can't say that in public. I mean, you can, but, but like, I, you know, freedom of speech is not freedom of consequence. And it's just like, <laughs> and then there's, you know, my wins, too. These are, I don't, I'm not really the kind of person that, like, likes to brag about a lot of my wins. So some of these are only here. Mm -hmm. You know, like this. I haven't told anybody that except family. Hmm. And I don't think I'm ever going to tell, like, the world. But it's something I'm super proud of because this is something that I've been working toward for his whole life. Yeah. Basically. You know what I mean? And so it's like, this is like 10 years in the making, I think, because it started at three years old. And we're here now. And mm -hmm. it's a big win, personally. And so I'm able to put this stuff down, and I don't have to tell nobody about it, but I have it here, and it's mm -hmm. like, it's really nice to know that it's not, I'm not just carrying it around <laughs> with me like a bunch of weight, because I feel like that's what, at least for me, that's what my most inner private thoughts are, or like the dialogue in my head. I just sometimes feel like it's like I'm, I'm wearing it on me, and it's, it gets heavy. And so to put it down, it's kind of like I get to vent it and release it, and I, there's like, it's documented, so it's nice. I know I'm not mm -hmm. gonna lose it, like you would lose a thought or an idea. So yeah, I think it's really therapeutic. So I love bullet journaling. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. Yeah, so like, Adrienne was saying, you know, like how she went put things down because you, know, you can't say some of these things. And for me, like, I have like this one thing um, in here Obviously, people who know me, I'm not really touchy-feely, lovey-dovey and everything. I've said it before. So, like, one one day I got really curious about, like, what a love language is. And then mm -hmm. me and Mona are planning on doing, like, this big astrology breakdown birth mm -hmm. charts of things, of oh, ourselves. Yeah. Um, and so I found out, like, my Venus, which is basically the way I express love or accept love, is also a Capricorn. Mm -hmm. And for people who know what that means, they're like, oh, that's kind of sad, Kelsey. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and because it's exactly what I am. You know, like, I'm very, like, practical mm -hmm. and I don't like things spontaneous. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I like to plan things. And, you know, it's, it's like, wow, you're the most, you know, if you know who, like, it's kind of hard to explain, but... So, my love is practical and very, like, not tactile, but, like, task-oriented. Like, mm -hmm. this morning, Gernon made me coffee and made me breakfast. And I'm like, oh, thank you. What is it called? So, is your love language, like, is it service? Kind of. Right? Is that what the e love language was? A little bit, like... I like when people do things for me, but I also yeah. like when people appreciate the things I do for them. So and like, you like to do stuff to, for people to show mm -hmm. that you yeah, love but, and care about But them, it's not right? like, oh, I bought you flowers. It's like, oh, no, I swept the floor. I yeah. love you. <laughs> yeah, no, that, uh, yeah, that's what it's called. Uh, something service. Active Some, service. Active I have, service. I have it right here. I, I, I have a whole yeah. spread of what my love language and yeah. like, the way I express and accept love is. <laughs> I love that. I need to do that in mind. So, like, like, one of the things in Venus is, like, lacks warmth and spontaneousness and I've always tell Gern and I'm like don't ever surprise me really yes I hate surprises <laughs> oh no <laughs> and so he knows that yeah because it would stress you out or something huh like yeah you I wouldn't, wouldn't react the way he wants you to react basically yeah but mm -hmm. like and then like buying something and hoping they'd react a specific way is really yeah for me it's really like you you bought this and you want me to react the way you want me to react but then i'm like yeah. why'd you do that and it's like don't you love him like i like it but why mm -hmm. why would you do so like when i tell Gernon exactly what i want for my birthday for christmas for mm -hmm. valentine's day for mother's day you know mm -hmm. it helps him and it helps me because it doesn't stress me out and i just don't like surprises yeah. so every time i see one of those commercials of like you know mm -hmm. the guy brings the wife out like surprise i bought you a car i'd be like <laughs> that is the worst thing in the world to ever do to me <laughs> like where'd the money come from who signed off on this <laughs> like, what? am i gonna have to pay for this everything <laughs> yeah it's like you bought me a responsibility. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know, right? That's what I always think too. When people get cars, I'm just like, really? Like, how is this all working but out? Now insurance. Now we got. So I can't get this mm -hmm. other thing. <laughs> I know. You're like, there goes my monthly hair appointment. <laughs> but yeah, so like I've uh, always told Gernon that like you know I don't like 
like surprises, and he knows that, and then it's, it just kind of confirmed it when I looked it up. Like, yes, I don't like surprises. I just think it's funny, though, because, like, a lot of those things, when you say them to the camera, they might come across like, oh, I'm not soft or... Or, like, romantic, or, like, girly, or whatever. But if you look at these pages, <laughs> they're so pretty. <laughs> it's, like, so beautifully decorated. Well, it's, it's, and I love that. Because that's the part. I just I'm not girly. I, it's very, like, it's very lovely, though. It's, like, super lovely. But it's, that's I like the how point. she's I kinda, defining. Yeah. <laughs> I used all the stickers I don't normally use. Like, I adore you. Or I mean, there's, like, soulmate, cupcakes love. with hearts on them. And, Butterflies. Oh, that, that was a packet I bought, like an actual like Valentine's Day sticker set that I bought. I love it. And it's very tactile, look, feel it. It's like embroidered and you can... Ooh, that's nice. <laughs> I know my love language is um, words of encouragement. Or was it words of... It wasn't words of encouragement, but it's like words of... Uh, no. Anyways, when people tell me I'm awesome, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> When That's they, not me, though. Like, I, yeah, like, I, it's like when, you know, I do a great job and that's recognized. Like, that gives me so much more joy and satisfaction and happiness and a sense of, like, I am appreciated. I think it's mm -hmm. words of appreciation or something. But, like, rather than receiving a gift mm -hmm. or um, being surprised by something or someone, like, sweeping the floor. You know what I mean? Like, I, I like when people verbalize to me that they care about me, they love me, they appreciate me. Because when they don't, when I don't hear those things, I'm just like, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> like, you need to freaking tell me. I can't read your mind. You know what I mean? And so if that's lacking, it's really hard for me to, like, um, yeah. And so, like, the way I show love, too, is kind of similar. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I like to... Um, I like to express to people as clearly as I possibly can how I feel about them. I honor love for others by being truthful and honest. Like, I won't BS people I love. I, I'll tell them the absolute truth. And people that I, I love and care about know that. Like, I will not lie to you. You know what I mean? I, I respect you too much to lie to your face. So, but yeah. <laughs> I think my second love language is probably gifts, though. I like gifts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, not as much, but I, I, gifts are cool. They're fun. You know, like, mm -hmm. I don't have to get a gift. Yeah. But, like, I'll cherish it forever. Mm -hmm. You know, I have yeah. gifts from, like, friends from all the way, like, to middle school. And mm -hmm. they're like, you know those way? I'm like, no, I, I'm a hoarder. So I'll <laughs> keep it, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. If I really love you, I'll keep your gift forever. And yeah. I have to get a gift. I have to get a gift on my birthday. I have to get a gift on Mother's Day. I have to get a gift on anniversaries. Otherwise, I'm just like, all right, we need to pull our weight here, people. <laughs> like, because I'm the one also getting gifts for people. You know what I mean? Like, it's especially if it's, like, my husband or my kids. I'm like, I'm going to go out of my way to make sure that you're, you're feeling celebrated. You know what I mean? So you better do the same for me. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So for me, like, oh. mine is, like, quality of time and acts of service. Mm -hmm. So, like, me and Gurney, and I remember before we had Frankie, mm -hmm. when we would try to celebrate something, we would literally mm -hmm. just, like, spend all day playing games together. Oh, yeah. Online games mm -hmm. together. And we could do that in Sedona. Yeah. So, you know, we would just be, like, I would be on my big computer, and he'd be on his, like, little laptop, mm -hmm. and we, we'd just be playing games online together and just yeah. doing that for, like, hours and hours. Yeah. And then, like, she's saying she needs gifts. I don't. Like, Gurney's like, oh, I need to buy you something. I'm like, or you could just make me breakfast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And it's, yeah. it's not saying it's wrong. It's just you got to learn how to different people yeah. accept and receive love and distribute love. And I yeah. know with Gurney, he, he likes hugs yeah. and stuff. So sometimes I'm like, I know but. my husband's yeah my husband's very affectionate. I think his love language is physical touch. Mm -hmm. So you know people who who when that's their love language they need hugs. They need a hand held. They need you to like embrace them because mm -hmm. they can feel all of your energy. You know what I mean? All that <laughs> love heart energy like emanating. And the trick about that though is they can also tell when it's not genuine. So it's also like has to be this. That's how they. That's, that makes their whole world, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It makes them light up and be happy and everything. And so, yeah, so it's, it's good to know that because before I didn't really, I didn't know that 
until we took the quizzes, the love language quizzes, and I was like, oh, okay, I get it. So <laughs> I read this book to um, the love languages of children, mm -hmm. but I haven't had the kids take the quiz yet, but I think it's also helpful too to know like, what is your child's love language? Which will, what will make them feel most appreciated and loved and respected? You know what I mean? So that's like step two. All I did was read the book. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, so th those are those are the things I put in my bullet journal. Yeah. You know, things like I like deep diving into mm -hmm. personal self of like who you are and the different mm -hmm. things that make you a person. Mm -hmm. So like I do the IMBD tests and the astrology stuff mm -hmm. and like the love language. Everyone's like, oh, your personality. It's like not because like it defines me. It's just like, yeah. Some of the things I agreed with with like my astrology birth chart, and sometimes like no, that doesn't feel like me. But mm -hmm. you know. It's just moonbeams and stars, so whatever. <laughs> I know. I know people say, like, astrology is so stupid, and, like, some people are like, anyone who believes in this stuff is nuts, but, like, I've noticed that, I, I, have you ever seen, like, when people merge Western and Chinese astrology? So. A little bit, because, like, I yeah. know, I, like, I'm a, I'm a sheep, and, like, you know, oh, like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Like I said, like I always try to find like all these different things that describe yeah, that's me. That's probably why, because like Mike's a sheep too, and I get along well with sheep. Mm -hmm. And I'm a I'm a pig. <laughs> I'm a Virgo pig, and so all of those qualities that are described when it comes to Virgo pigs, that's totally me. I've noticed. Like it's I'm all about like yeah, it's it totally fits. So it's funny. Yeah, because, like, with me, I always found it funny that I was a Capricorn and a sheep. Mm -hmm. And, like, going, I'm just a sheep sheep. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, that's cool. <laughs> that is cool. <laughs> Whatever. I'm just a sheep sheep. <laughs> <laughs> but like you don't take it seriously or to the heart or whatever yeah. and it's just they're just like interesting tidbits that mm -hmm. happen mm -hmm. I think it's interesting and fun so but yeah um, comment below do you guys bullet journal are you going to look into bullet journaling do you, would you rather just buy a planner pre-made and if so would you want a Navajo planner we can list some Navajo planners below I know there's the inspired by Dana mm -hmm. there's also the Shit Dana planner something I can't remember the name right now yeah. and then there's also Navajo creations I think mm -hmm. she does a lot of live YouTube and I think she has her start in October mm -hmm. oh um, nice not, not YouTube's but Facebook yeah nice so That's cool. there's there's a couple of different Navajo planners out there if you guys mm -hmm. want to check them out yeah so don't forget to like share subscribe comment below your favorite bullet journaling thing if you're interested mm -hmm. in receiving you know, handmade or handmade homemade stickers by me. You know, let me know. I'm trying to get a sticker set created and be nice to receive feedback. Okay. Go Thank ahead. You. <laughs> Thanks for watching this episode. <laughs>